we have already mentioned several uh, several markets, uh, or I mean several markets as examples. But one of the markets we were uh, we were actually describing in more detail, and it was automotive. But uh, another very important market uh, that can highly benefit from uh, uh, adoption of AI is an energy sector. Isn't yes, it? Uh, we are heavily involved there, <laughs> and uh, it's clear that uh, AI and involving AI, uh, AI uh, into uh, those solutions uh, will bring definitely the uh, added value there. We are, and I expect that we will be speaking <laughs> here about the predictions and uh, uh, using such algorithms to improve uh, the results. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, our technology and our solutions. So, so uh, this is really a, a field with huge potential. Uh, we uh, are doing great there. And uh, I expect that uh, in the next few minutes, we will speak here about the progress in uh, uh, this field. OK, so I'm glad to, uh, to welcome here uh, Jaromir Šivic from Unicorn speaking about all these topics. Yeah, please. Welcome. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So oh, let me. Let me pass you through this topic. So, uh, brief introduction. My name is Jaromir Šivic. Uh, I work for Unicorn for over 10 years. Right now, mostly in uh, energy sector, uh, doing uh, and uh, uh, developing, analyzing all of those IT solutions for transmission system operators, uh, storages, mainly in the gas industry, and as well for energy traders. So, uh, as it was already mentioned, uh, there are many, many energy challenges and innovation ahead of us. Some of them are imposed on, on us, uh, basically, by our policymakers. Others are enforced on us <coughs> by nature. Uh, I'm talking about renewables. Uh, everybody right now uh, knows that uh, there is just a uh, decline amount of fossil, fossil fuels in the future, so we need to move that way anyway. There is a huge dr drift in the e-mobility markets nowadays, and uh, our policymakers in Brussels make it, uh, make it absolutely clear to us that there is no other way around it. There are smart grids uh, with uh, smart meterings. We are talking about them for years uh, right now, but slowly, slowly, it's, slowly it starts to happen. So we have all of those informations for, uh, from, from your appliances and uh, we are gathering those data and uh, those data will lead us to the new way of predicting environments, con consumptions and so on. And of course uh, there are many others. And let me put it this way, Let, let's make a, a long story short, AI will be and will play a major role on, in all of those fields. And I cannot imagine a field without AI in the future because of that big amount of data we will gather from basically each and every corner of the energy sector. So right now, right now, uh, we are seeing already AI making its progress in commodity markets, mainly in algorithmic trading. It is already there, hopefully making big money in short term commodity prices forecasting in uh, consumption and generation of energy. I, I assume uh, from photovoltaics, it's uh, just uh, the way uh, it will happen and we will go that way, uh, moving from a standard traditional uh, statistical models. And uh, maintenance planning, again, we will move out, of, out from uh, stati statistical models to uh, AI-driven by deep neural networks. And there is many more. Uh, I remember there were a lot of a lot of PhD studies about uh, losses, detections, and theft uh, for DSOs when uh, I've, I, I did a PhD uh, studies. So um, if you are somehow uh, stealing on electricity, I, I hope you are not. There is a high chance that, that the AI detected your, those losses and sent a worker down your way. So how do we get here? Uh, you may be asking, well, uh, the AI and uh, sophisticated statistical methods in energy sectors, that they were not needed uh, like 200 years ago in 19th century. So 
Why do we need them right now? Uh, just to imagine uh, the situation 100 years ago, there were typically a power plant burning fossil fuels, lighting up the streets. There was no complexity whatsoever. Uh, the city was alone, uh, not connected with other cities or other countries. Now the situation is completely, radically different. So uh, we are heavily interconnected. There are many and many different sources of energy and we need to somehow deal with this. And uh, to deal with it, we have traditional statistical methods, which are in use from, let's say, 90s, probably 70s, uh, uh, 1970. And from 1990, uh, it is heavily used together with computers and computerization. But uh, the amount of data is increasing exponentially every year. So uh, those statistical methods are basically right now at their limits. So we need to move further. And we need to move to artificial intelligence. When talking about artificial intelligence, um, there are several descriptions of, of, this, uh, of this field. In each and every book, you will find a scientific explanation what the artificial intelligence is. But uh, I like the original Turing definition and the modern definition of AI. So we'll, let's read it briefly. Turing definition of AI, where Turing says that system that thinks like humans and system that acts like humans is an artificial intelligence. So just based on this premise, we have already achieved that. But that's not true, of course, because if you Nowadays, chat with chat GPT, you would say, this is the artificial intelligence, this is the new human. That's, that's not the case here. So we have um, somehow moved that, um, moved that idea further. And now we say that uh, the modern definition of AI is this that system that thinks highly rationally, even exceeding human, and system that acts highly rationally, again, even exceeding humans. And uh, just one brief note um, that everybody is now nowadays speaking about ChatGPT. It's, uh, it's a common theme here in this conference. But um, I think we are still, if, if you take a look on that lower part of the image, we are still in the first phase with artificial narrow intelligence, even with this, even this with, with this complex neural network like ChatGPT. It will take us some time to get to the artificial general intelligence and probably decades to get to artificial super intelligence, which can improve itself and basically will not need human interaction so much. So in energy sector, we are developing mainly, mainly artificial narrow intelligences. So what is the modern approach? Uh, in in energy sector when using AI. Of course, we use uh, neural networks, deep neural networks, and mainly recurrent neural networks. Even if we are right now shifting from recurrent networks, you, you see that loop uh, in, in the picture, meaning uh, there, is, uh, there is some feedback from the output layer, from, from the outputs we have predicted in a previous step, back to the... Uh, to the uh, neural brain itself for the prediction in the next step. So uh, this is our daily bread when, when computing and outputs for many of those uh, topics I've mentioned. And uh, what is not clear for this image is that main part of work is the first step, just uh, how to prepare correctly the input layer meaning that you can imagine you have uh, in your home, uh, you have many electrical appliances. Uh, there are uh, many, uh, many homes in your city. We just got those information from the city. Uh, this is, a, for example, consumption. And I will mainly, mainly talk about consumption here. But um, when we got those information, those are just a rough information. We need to filter them, we need to prepare them in a correct way, together with many other input parameters. 
for the artificial neural network to somehow please the algorithm which trains that neural brain to get the proper outputs. So 80% of work we do is just by preparing the data, that huge amount of data for, uh, for a neural network. Then there is the funny part, this is to construct the neural brain, because we are constructing it in a way, and I will say it openly, uh, it's just reading, uh, reading most recent um, scientific papers, putting it together, and then it is trial and error. Yeah, that, that's, that's the state uh, of the art right now. So this is the most uh, funny part, because when you design the brain uh, the wrong way, you obviously uh, get the wrong answers, or uh, it memorizes the thing, but it is not capable to predict anything meaningful. So this all is possible because we have a lot of, a lot of data nowadays. It was not the case in the past, but uh, the exponential grow and uh, the IoT world uh, means that we are receiving data which we are no longer able and capable to process uh, using uh, traditional statistical methods. So to get more precise in all of those fields, I mean in uh, forecasting of commodity prices, in forecasting of uh, maintenance need in geographic information systems, for example, uh, those guys who operate distribution systems, distribution networks, they need to know if there is a um, broken pipe or a pipe which will broke, for example, gas pipe leading to your home, which will break in a matter of, let's say, months or years, and if there, is a, uh, there is a need to repair it right now to prevent further damages. And of course, in, uh, in uh, production and consumption of electricity and gas, we have nowadays much more data than we had before. Therefore, the logical assumption is that we should be able to predict that consumption and production of electricity much more, uh, much more precisely, driving the price of a commodity down. So uh, let me tell you more about uh, the consumption prediction here. For this case, uh, you may imagine there are several inputs and it is hard to, to prepare those inputs um, just for, uh, for artificial intelligence. It, it is as well hard, somehow hard, to prepare them for a traditional uh, statistical approach. But for artificial intelligence, it's even more trickier in, in many parts. We are reusing those which we can reuse from the statistical approach, because uh, at the moment, uh, probably I didn't mention that, it's, uh, that's a critical part, uh, we are delivering software equipped with, with that statistical analysis for a lot of traders in a central Europe. And we still use statistical approach, but uh, behind the scenes, and I'm revealing it right now, we are working uh, on a different way, much modern way involving deep neural networks. So let me show you at least the glimpses, what we do, and how we do it. So as you can imagine, there are several very important inputs when predicting a consumption. Uh, one of the most important is weather forecast. So if we just plan to uh, predict what will be you know, the electricity consumption of a city of, or, or, or of a part of the city, we need quite precise weather prediction for, let's say, at least next uh, 48 hours, but probably, uh, probably more. Then we need to have information from uh, from uh, DSO's previous, um, previous usage of the network and from traders' previous usage of the network, uh, which means what was the consumption during the same period over the past several years. And we have those data. We have those data for uh, virtually each and every point, withdrawing point in the network. Then 
we need to have information about planned uh, maintenances, just to avoid mistakes in those predictions, and many other, many other input parameters. And we have to process all of those parameters the way so we please artificial network and it will produce a meaningful result for us. Uh, so with weather, you would say, uh, well, uh, if you have a weather over a year or over a years, uh, you should use that weather as a, uh, as a marker, as, a, as a something what is already known and put it directly into the artificial intelligence. But that's not the case. Uh, we need to at least normalize it and make uh, some other filtering on top of that weather uh, and by weather, I don't mean a temperature. You right now see only a temperature charts from uh, different points in Czech Republic. We have them all over the place, uh, over the Europe. And we do not use only a temperature, but we use as well uh, clouds, um, wind speed, wind direction, and many other. Then there is one tricky part. How to explain to the neural network uh, the concept, the notion of time. Because a neural network does not know anything about, uh, about our uh, perceiving of, of uh, seasons during a year. And you may already assume that uh, in summer there is much less consumption, for example, of gas. And nowadays much higher consumption of electricity because of uh, air conditioning systems running all the day. Uh, during winter it is quite opposite. Everybody still nowadays is burning a gas. So, uh, we need somehow to tell artificial intelligence what a date uh, in, in the year we are at right now. And we need to tell the artificial intelligence uh, something more about daylight saving hours, because um, still in Europe we use a daylight saving hour and it makes quite a mess, uh, especially around those days where the, the hour shifts from uh, winter time to the summertime and vice versa. So those are basically three signals we give artificial intelligence to, uh, to say it what the date is, uh, what the date of, of, of uh, year uh, it is in, what should we, uh, what are we expecting for, for the artificial intelligence, for deep neural network to predict. Then we need uh, to somehow tell the artificial intelligence uh, what part of a day it is. Uh, if, it is uh, if it is a midnight or if we are uh, some reaching uh, morning hours and so on. So we do not use a uh, traditional approach like uh, anybody else, but we still stick with uh, those sine and cosine wave just to interpret the hour of a day, to give it some periodicity. And this really pleases uh, the uh, AI we are building quite, uh, quite a lot. Then there is another problem, how to represent uh, holidays, just a calendar of uh, some country, typically a Czech Republic. I, I here have uh, the calendar from Czech Republic. So how to tell artificial intelligence that a uh, holiday is approaching. And we have developed a special method. We need, to, uh, we need to give that information to artificial intelligence beforehand. It, again, with uh, this uh, specialized curves. So what are the results we have when we are working on this side project? Uh, for uh, for a consumption and uh, it is no longer a side project because uh, this is something we are capable and able to release to our customers. We will talk about it later on. So we have already a solutions um, utilizing traditional statistical methods. We know what the errors of those predictions are and now we are building sophisticated deep neural network which is capable to do the same thing and probably uh, even better. And right now, after, uh, let's say, a year or two years of research, we are capable to be in par. So that means we have achieved almost 
and in many cases exceeded the capabilities of the statistical models which we have in development and we have delivered to our customers for like last two decades. So this is how quickly this new technology is disrupting, uh, disrupting uh, markets. Uh, when you take a look on the number of trainable parameters, you will see it's only 1.5 uh, millions of trainable parameters, which is uh, compared, for example, to uh, ChatGPT3, which has, I think, around 100 billions of trainable parameters. It's, it's like nothing, but still, this is a very narrow, very narrow uh, deep neural net, which is focused mainly on consumption prediction in this case. And it seems uh, it is enough. So the problems we are encountering. The main problem, as you may have guessed correctly, is the weather forecast. Weather is a complex system. It is a chaotic system. Uh, and I do not think, personally, that we will be ever able to predict mid-term or long-term weather forecast accurately. I think we are capable of doing so during um, for, for the next 48 or 72 hours, but to have a precise weather forecast for next one or two months, it's simply impossible. So we need to stick with uh, somehow mm, regularized, normalized weather, which we have in our systems for uh, longer predictions. For a short prediction, there is quite a high accuracy, as well powered by an artificial neural net. Then there are other problems, those that we are simply not capable of predicting. Uh, that's a COVID. Nobody expected in 2019 that there will be, uh, 2019, 2020, that there will be uh, such a huge disaster like a COVID-19. Uh, nobody expected the work in, in Ukraine. And those are events which disturb the industry so much that uh, that the predictions we've made uh, are just useless and we need to start from scratch using traditional statistical methods, but not that, that is something which will uh, not happen in such a way, in, in such a, for, for such a large period, because to adapt to COVID-19, um, we've spent more than a year, almost a year and a half to uh, just fix our predictions based on statistical model. But if we were using during that time artificial intelligence and models built on top of it, then uh, I think that period would be much, much shorter. And then there is uh, the third big problem, which is, uh, which is impenetrability. And that is probably the most significant with, uh, with our customers and basically with anybody you now we work and we tend to convince to use uh, use our neural models, neural networks, because uh, we still see that uh, in energy sector those traders are very conservative. They think that uh, the traditional statistical methods are correct, they should stick with them, and at the moment there is no need uh, to move to uh, deep neural networks. But as we saw already with COVID-19, now, uh, the re their reasoning, I think, is not, uh, not accurate. We should have done much better if we were using uh, deep neural nets there. So uh, the problem here is that we are not capable of easily explaining why the deep neural network came up with, with a solution, which is obviously wrong. We are capable to fix it by uh, augmenting of input data and just writing the test cases for that particular example, which is not correct, and to fix the deep neural network during a, a, during a training process by those augment, augmented data. So there is one thing which uh, is worth mentioning uh, until I would like to the uh, colleagues here to to play the video, but uh, 
shortly. Um, let me describe what is in that video. It is most recent video from uh, 60 Minutes. And there is this fundamental question uh, for, for uh, Google CEO, which, which asks, uh, the, the moderator asked the Google CEO if he is afraid, basically afraid of releasing the new, very complex artificial intelligence, even if he don't know what it's actually doing. So let us play the video. Can we do it? Should I do it? There is an aspect of this which we call, uh, all of us in the field, call it as a black box. You know, you don't fully understand. And you can't quite tell why it said this or why it got wrong. We have some ideas, and our ability to understand this gets better over time. But that's where the state of the art is. You don't fully understand how it works, and yet you've turned it loose on society? Yeah, let me put it this way. I don't think we fully understand how a human mind works either. And that's exactly it. We don't know how it works deep down, but we know that the outcome is correct. And therefore, if we can test it that way, this is the same approach as we test humans and human brains, we should not be afraid of using it. If Google is not afraid of using it, if Microsoft is not afraid of using it, we shouldn't be afraid either. So here are briefly described uh, uh, pros and cons of statistical methods and deep neural networks. And let me finish the presentation with this word. Uh, in Unicorn, we are aware of where the industry is leading. We are working on incorporating deep neural nets in basically all of our, uh, all of our products. Right now, we have it already in Lancelot forecast management system and it is coming to all of other products as well. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very nice to see that the energy market uh, actually does need it, right? Because um, it will solve many problems. I actually want to start with one question because uh, it was nice that as the calendar was divided into Monday to, uh, and the weekends and some holidays, um, are you working with the idea to potentially in future predict some anomalies or some sort of, I wouldn't say extreme events because it would like lead to COVID and stuff like that that I don't want. But uh, I mean that, okay, this Monday starts weirdly. That's it. Uh, yeah, there is, there is an approach uh, which we have already tested uh, with a residual neural networks. So uh, we are training several neural networks on top of each other. First, we, uh, we just train the big one, uh, which predicts uh, the standard outcome. And if we detect in a historical data uh, some anomalies, then there is another neural network which mm -hmm. simply deals with it, and it predicts that there is an anomaly. So this is, this is our approach, how we do it. Okay. Okay. So uh, this uh, creates a huge opportunity when balancing the consumption and the flow of energy. Because, uh, uh, for example, uh, those public holidays are valid for Czech Republic, uh, then there are public holidays uh, for Slovakia, Germany, and so mm -hmm. on. So uh, that's the first part of the story. And then uh, there is uh, another, uh, uh, another part which uh, relates to the way how we live, uh, how we uh, behave, and uh, this creates uh, the opportunity and flexibility. So uh, could you uh, elaborate it, uh, a little bit uh, more about this uh, topic? Because uh, <coughs> it is essentially something uh, which uh, uh, where the uh, added value is still somehow hidden because uh, we know that there is something like this, that uh, we know that uh, we want to use it uh, and uh, that uh, we want to uh, get the added value from it. But uh, the question is how? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me put it this way. Uh, we are just uh, starting to see uh, those emerging properties. 
uh, not only with flexibility, but as well with home uh, energy storages, mm -hmm. uh, which are growing nowadays because each and every household wants to have their own battery. They, they want to have their own batteries at home. And again, as uh, this trend will rise and it is rising exponentially, it will be harder and harder for traditional methods to predict um, when those people will start to using their own home storages, their own batteries. And um, again, here we can leverage and, and utilize artificial intelligence, I think, much more than traditional statistical, statistical approach. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, just by your experience, uh, are, uh, are these uh, energy, uh, the, the companies at the energy sector investing a lot in this I, AI and others? Yeah. Uh, what we know uh, is that everybody is researching it. They are, uh, the, the companies, traders, TSOs, uh, they are just playing with it, but not using it. They are, well, well let's say, very conservative, and they stick with, uh, with their current approach, even if they have better, uh, better outcomes, slightly better outcomes from, from uh, those uh, neural networks they have developed. And uh, one more thing, um, just, just to imagine, uh, go to go with accuracy from like 50 to 98 percent, it takes you some amount of work. But to get from 98 to 99 percent, it gets you 10 times that's that amount of work if you use a traditional approach. But if you use uh, artificial intelligence, namely deep neural networks, then it's much shorter time. You will spend. Yeah, it's, it's a very common problem in all tasks. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but on the other hand, I can understand mm. the uh, the concerns uh, regarding the usage of uh, neural networks in uh, energy markets because, uh, you know, uh, everybody uh, uh, wants to be sure that the electricity is flowing the right way <laughs> and uh, that uh, there are not uh, uh, that there are uh, uh, no accidents and so on. So, from this point of view, it it could be just a matter of the time uh, and. Uh, uh, the way how the uh, how the technology is uh, maturing somehow. Very good. Uh, I think we are almost uh, out of the time. So thank you very much for a great presentation yeah. uh, and for thank your you contribution. For having me. Yeah. And uh, I think again, both speaker of this uh, this block. Uh, we are before before break.